Okay. We're going to do problem number 67 from chapter 9, not 22. Uh, in this problem, you have two objects, one with a mass m, one that's equal to 0.5 kilograms, one with a mass 2 that's equal to 1.5 kilograms. And you're given some initial velocities here, here, and then here's the final velocity in Cartesian form for part A, and then part B and C. Um, for this, what we need to do is to use conservation of momentum because the two objects collide with each other. This is the final velocity of that. We want to find the final velocity of the other object. First thing to remember here is that momentum is conserved in the x, y, and z direction separately. So in order to find out what the x component of V2F is, we can say that momentum of the momentum in the x direction initial should be equal to the final momentum in the x direction. So in this case, the momentum in the x direction for this particle will be 2 times 0.5. I'm going to suppress the units only because there's a lot of calculations in this. So the initial momentum here is going to be 2 times 0 0.5. The x momentum for v2 is going to be 1.5 times negative 1. And that's going to be equal to the final momentum. This object here has a mass of uh, 0.5. its velocity, which is negative 1, plus 1.5 times what we're looking for, which is V2FF. Now, in order to solve this, all we really need to do is to just add this term over here. So 2 If you uh, actually calculate all of this, you're going to get zero. Okay, so our V2F here is going to be zero I hat. We need to do the same calculation for the um, this component and for this component. Uh, so for the second one here, we're going to be using PIY equals PFY. I'm just going to write a very similar expression to this um, for the y direction. So we're going to have negative 3 times 0.5. have 1.5, this mass times this, too. This one has 3 times 0.5, which will end up being negative if we subtract it over here. All divided by 1.5. And again, you're going to get 0. If you do it again for, you'll have 0.5 times 1, minus 3 times 0.5, uh, equals this, you'll add this to the other side, you get a similar expression. So you're going to get actually just 0, 0, and 0 here. So V2F is they also want us to figure out if this is a, um, what kind of collision it is, basically. Okay. And uh, in order to figure that out, we need to calculate the initial kinetic energy and then calculate the final kinetic energy. The initial kinetic energy for this system is going to be 1 half in 1 e squared plus 1 half in 2 thing to note here is that in order to square these velocities, for this one to square it, what you do is you take uh, this squared plus this squared plus this squared. So it's going to be 2 squared, which is 4, plus 3 squared, which is 9, plus 1 squared, which is 1. Okay, so what we're going to have basically is this. Ki okay, is 1 half times 0 0.5 times uh, 4 plus 9 plus 1. And this one's the same. Plus one is thirteen. They're the same because even though they have the same coefficients, basically one, two, and three, so it's going to be nine plus four plus one again. And what we'll get is that the initial kinetic energy here is equal to something like fourteen. Yeah. Let's see. So the final kinetic energy what we're going to have is one half times. First particle 0 0.5. Its final kinetic energy is this, so it's going to be 64 plus 9 plus 1. And the second particle doesn't have any kinetic energy because its velocity was 0. 
So the final kinetic energy here, which you get is 18.5. Okay, because this is different from this, that means that there was an increase in energy and it can't be an elastic collision, it must be an inelastic collision. In order to make this video not so long, I'm going to skip part B. If you do part B, what you'll find is that B2F here ends up being exactly the same as this. And uh, that means that it has to be a perfectly inelastic collision, because if the two objects have the same velocity, it's like they banged into each other and then moved off with a common velocity, they must be sticking together. They're moving along exactly the same vector, they were at one point in time in the same place, so they're sticking together. I'm going to erase this in order to do the last part here. For the last part, we need to figure out what the final velocity of this when we're told only this component of this here is A. Now what I'm going to do for this one, I'm going to point out that notice that if we compare part C to part A, B1F has the same X component and the same Y component, meaning the calculation for what those components here are are going to be the same. So B2F, then we know, is going to be 0 I hat plus 0 J hat plus, now we're going to have some factor here. I'm going to call it B, so I don't have to keep writing B2F over and over and over again. All right? So there's our, uh, our setup now, and we need to calculate what... Uh, what A and B are. We're going to need two equations to do this. The first equation we'll use is the same momentum conservation equation we had for the x direction. So Bi, sorry for the z direction. Uh, Pi-z is going to be, uh, we still have the same initial uh, here, so we have 1 times 0 0.5 for that momentum, and then minus 3 times 1.5. PFZ is going to be 0 0.5 times A plus 1.5 times B. Okay. Left hand side of this equation here is going to be uh, 0.5 minus 3 times 0.5, which ends up being 4.5, so you're going to get negative 4. And then I can subtract the B over here. divide the coefficient of a to get that a equals negative 4 over this gives you negative 8, and this over this gives you negative 3. Okay, so we're going to use that here in a second. The next thing that we can use is conservation of energy. Conservation of energy tells us that the kinetic energy, because of this, they tell us this is an elastic collision in part C, tells us the initial kinetic energy equals the final kinetic energy. The initial kinetic energy of this system is going to be exactly what it was before. Uh, it's going to be 14 because it's the exact same uh, expression as we just calculated a second ago with AWA rays. The final kinetic energy in this case is going to be one half times mass one. <clears throat> multiplied by uh, its final uh, velocity here. Now we have to square each of these. One squared plus three squared plus this squared. Sorry, 1 plus 9. 1 plus 9 plus 8 squared. <coughs> plus then we have this one right here. It has no components here, so it's just going to be like that. Now we need to solve this. We also need to replace A with this expression here so that we only have an equation involving B. I'm going to drop the joules from this, so we're going to get 14 equals 1 half times this gives you a quarter. 1 plus 9 is 10. A squared is going to be this whole expression squared, which will be 8 times 8 is 64. <coughs> 3 times 3 is 9. 9 b squared. And then we're going to get a cross term, which is 8 times 3 times 2, or 48. <coughs>
going to be a squared. They're all positive because once you square it, the negatives go away. Plus one half of this. Okay. And now we have an equation that just has b's in it. And if we rearrange this equation, what we should get is the following. I guess I can show this up. So we're going to subtract the 14 over here. So we'll get... Uh, So we're going to get 0 equals uh, 3b squared like that. We can see these terms individually if we want to by, uh, so inside of here, oh, I lost something else. Let's see. This one should look even because it's 3 times a is 24 times 2 times b. So then we've got 48 over 4 is 12. That's where that comes from. For the b squares, we have 9 over 4 plus, uh, this is like 3 over 4. So 9 plus 3 is 12. 12 over 4 is 3, which is your b squared term. And for the 4.5, we have 64 plus 10, which is 74. 74 over 4 uh, minus 14. And then 14 is equal to <clears throat> 4 times 14 over 4. But eventually you'll get 4.5. Which we then do is uh, plug this into the quadratic equation. So b is going to be equal to uh, negative 12 plus or minus the square root of uh, b squared, which is 12 squared, minus 4ac, this and this. I'll divide it by 2 times this. And what we'll get is for b, we're going to get two values. We're going to get get those two values. If we then take those and plug them back in here for a, we'll get two values for a. So this is b. A equal to 2.74 for this. And for this one, we'll get A equal to negative 7.6.74. Like that. So those are answers. This is the final velocity in the y direction. The uh, A would flip it back right in here so we could find the final velocity. This is the final velocity uh, for object 2, this and this.